real estate always intrigued me, but I thought it was for the people that were already rich and already extremely intelligent. But I thought I had to start out that way. And so once I started taking action, I started talking to brokers. I started, you know, looking for off market deals. And that was a major breakthrough that that it wasn't just reading a story. It was uh, part of, you know, what was happening in my life. Welcome everyone to the Road Less Traveled Show. This is a show about people who were successful in an earlier career and chose to go down a different path. I'm your co-host, Richard Coyne. And I'm your co-host, Bill Zaylor. Today we have David Call who's joined us. And David, we're so thankful you're on. So take it away, Bill. Thanks, Richard. Yeah, welcome, David, to the Road Less Traveled Show. Appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, David, can you tell us a little bit about your former career and then what path you've transitioned to now? Uh, Sure. So... I was an insurance agent for 15 years and uh, started out with Aflac, you know, the, the duck, everybody knows the duck. And I uh, started out with door to door sales, just going business to business and, and knocking on doors to drum up business and um, went uh, into health insurance, went into work for Farm Bureau at a time. And, um, and just, uh, although I could, uh, I could expand on sales, I could never go beyond myself. And so I was always looking for a way to uh, expand my wealth and be able to expand myself, uh, create financial freedom. And so real estate just really made a lot of sense to me. So that, that's how I ended up uh, back in 2015, started the path uh, to, into real estate. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> what type of real estate are you uh, focused on? Is there one particular niche you're looking at or are you kind of wide? Sure. Uh, so mainly owner finance notes and lease options. And so uh, where we take a, a, a single family home, we buy it at a discount and and then sell it with owner finance and get a down payment and then a stream of income. And it sort of, sort of has a combination feel of a flip and a, a rental property because you get a chunk of change uh, when you sell the property for the down payment and then you get a stream of income. And it's a very clean stream of income because uh, you're not landlording, you're just the bank. And so, mm-hmm. you know, they pay you and they're, they're the owners, they're responsible for all repairs, maintenance, and, and anything else. Oh, that's great. Fantastic. Yeah. So David, when you were in the insurance area, you know, first with um, Aflac Loan and then Farm Bureau, as you said, is there a funny story you can share something that, you know, along the way it was just, a, you couldn't even believe it, uh, that you were having to deal with it or put up with it, or just the weirdness of, of the situation? Yeah, we had quite a few, uh, some of my colleagues said I should have written a book on everything, <laughs> all the different things that happened. This, uh, but I think uh, probably one of the most, uh, it, it's funny now, but it's pretty embarrassing at the moment. So I had a friend. Uh, so when I, when I started working with Farm Bureau, uh, life insurance was the thing that they centered, you know, all the all the trips and all the rewards and everything around and, and the bonuses. And so it was a really big deal. And uh, I sent an appointment with a friend uh, of mine to uh, sell him a life insurance policy and went to his house and the meeting went well. And it was one of those, if, if you've been in sales before, one of those that, you know, as, as, as you sign, you're trying not to smile, you know, <laughs> one of those types of things. And so I got excited, you know, we shook hands, I got in my car and um, when I was still sitting in his driveway, I, I text uh, the manager, I said, got a big one. And he said, what do you mean? And I said, it was 127 a month, it's like 1524 a year. And I hit I hit send and I looked down and it wasn't the manager. It was a guy I just sold the policy to. Now I was sitting in his driveway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well at least he knows you appreciated him. So right. yeah. 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 We he was a, a buddy of mine. Uh, uh, so I was, you know, he's in sales too. So I just, you know, said, you know how it is when you make a good sell. So uh, but, <laughs> It's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> could have gone worse, right? You could have yeah. story like, I got another sucker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, excellent, Dave. Um, can you tell us what like a deciding factor was that got you to change from insurance and to go into real estate? Was it just the way to use your time more? Where, like you said, you kind of you're limited out with how much you can personally, how many policies you can visit or sell, and how many you can visit per day with your own time. Is it just the scaling, or what? What was kind of a deciding factor? Yeah, well, um, I was always independent, an independent contractor, and there wasn't a cap on my income because I got paid what, you know, what I could sell and, and the, the clients I could maintain. 
but I was always trying to find a way to make a, a true business out of it. Uh, back in 2005, I wrote, I read the book, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And, uh, you know, he talks about the cash flow quadrants and the difference between working for hours versus building a system um, that, that works for you or being an investor and having money work for you. And so I was always trying to figure out ways to to go beyond just myself and duplicate myself. And uh, it, it seems that even though I was an independent contractor, I always tended to get get shot down somehow and what i mean by that is um uh back in 2013 2014 uh you know i i I was working with farm bureau and we were selling blue cross blue shield policies and i I hired an appointment setter and uh to set up the appointments for me uh, just because i knew if i was in an appointment i couldn't be i couldn't set more appointments while i was in an appointment and so i needed somebody to always keep a flow of appointments. And so that worked extremely well. And um, I believe the second place agent had, you know, in that open enrollment period had uh, 70 some policies and, and we were at 116. And so it worked very well. And uh, my manager was very happy with it, but it, it got up to upper management that I had an outside person that I had hired to set these appointments and they shut it down. Uh, just because they wanted to control the process. And and then I, at that point, that was a, a turning point uh, where I realized that I could only expand so much. I couldn't expand beyond myself, if that makes yeah. sense. And so I ended up going to a uh, T. Harv Eker event and and they had a, a real estate course and, and I took the real estate course. And all the meantime, uh, the Rich Dad, Poor Dad, the concept of Rich Dad, Poor Dad and, and Robert Kiyosaki's concepts uh, had been working on me for quite a while and uh, real estate was you know a way I saw that I could go go beyond myself and mm-hmm. uh, be completely independent and create that, right. pass- that passive income that I was looking for well that's right I mean yeah. no matter what your your level is right you could be a, a very a partner in a law firm you can make five hundred a thousand dollars an hour but you're still limit out on billable hours as one individual right so I mean you're there's still a cap. It's a, it's a wide, it's a very wide cap between, you know, minimum wage and, you know, a partner law firm or a surgeon, but, but you still have only so much time you can convert into to dollars where like, so if you, you know, have real estate or, you know, all those things are working for you as you sleep. And as you build that, it continues other people are work, going to work, getting up to come back and pay, pay the mortgage, pay the bank, you know, grow your portfolio that way too. Yeah, exactly. And especially as well, you know, being an independent contractor, if you're not out there working and selling, you're not getting money coming in the door. Uh, right. I mean, obviously down the road, you have your residuals and things like that. So I'm not talking about that. But again, I'm just talking about the specific production of, of a new sale is dependent upon you being there to do that rather than having, you know, creating a, a way to get a multiplier effect by, you know, by having a business that somebody else is doing some of the, you know, heavy list, lifting and things like that. So, yeah. Yeah. That's what- I'm sorry. I was just saying, that's why your, your meet, uh, model's intriguing too, for like, like Richard's saying, if you know it's if it's strictly fix and flip, you're really just you know you're just finish one job and you're out of income until you do the next job, right? Right. Where yours, you fix it, you create the value, you create equity in it, but then you also have a steady stream of income as you're paying that note, so it continues right. to work for you. Right, right, and I, and I do believe that <clears throat> within every business, it can be ran as active income or passive income. It can be a job or it can be a business, and what I mean by that is. Um, it, real estate really intrigued me, um, but there's people that have, uh, in the insurance business, found a way to, you know, maybe have different contracts where they don't have a limit, and then they replace themselves. You know, uh, they hire agents, and then eventually they hire a manager to manage those agents, and they open up multiple locations. Um, so that that would be a way that you could expand within insurance. Whereas in real estate, mm-hmm. you know. You can, like you said, you can be a one-man show or maybe a one-man and, and a crew, but uh, you're the one doing all the work and you can only do one at a time. And the same thing, even if you're you're a landlord, if you don't know how to put the right systems in place, uh, that, you know, <laughs> you, you can create a full-time job for yourself. So I don't, although I think real, real estate is one of the best uh, ways to, to build uh, wealth and passive income and financial freedom, I think it's more the business and how you structure it that creates that freedom. 
Yeah. <laughs> and, and again, go back to your concept that you were actually hiring somebody to do a set of appointments for you. You were paying that person. I, I am very surprised that the company shut that down because quite honestly, what was the result? It didn't cost them any more money, but your produ production went way up. Um, but I, you know, you were 50% more productive than the other guy. So I, I, I don't understand why they shut that down. It just doesn't make sense. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So David, just again, as you were, you know, really moving out of the, the insurance piece full time and, and, and full time to what you're doing now, were there some obstacles you encountered along the way? I think the biggest obstacle was the fear of letting go with the insurance business. Um, the one thing that I, I did like about the insurance business is it had residual income. So mm -hmm. if I had a book of a thousand policy holders, uh, every month that they paid in, I, I got a percent of that and it continued. And so I built up, you know, a pretty, pretty good income with that. And uh, it was very challenging to, to walk away from that because I was, you know, I'm married, have four kids and, uh, you know, I'm the only income source. And so um, when I was in my 20s, I was really uh, aggressive in business and, and, and did some crazy things and, and really suffered for it. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I, I think overcoming the past uh, failures, the thoughts and the fears that, you know, of, of, of the difficult times I've been through when I was in my 20s was all, you know, it would continue to bubble up as I tried to make plans to, to leave. Um, and so I really waited until, you know, the month that I gave my notice, my part-time real estate income was four times what my insurance income was. And so I, at a certain point I realized I was losing uh, money, but it was still, that, that was a challenging part is, is, is overcoming those fears uh, of past failures and, and being able to step out and let go of that steady income that I'd built for years. Yeah, it's, that's true. I mean, it's, it's a big, big, some of the golden handcuffs, they say, you know, in some of the jobs that it's, it's such a good job, you hate to give it up. But then you realize, like you said, you're limiting your ability to, to grow the other business because the time constraints, you're spending so much time on your, your W2 job, as it were. Yeah, right. Exactly. Well, did, what was a, uh, can you think of what like a first victory you had in your new new career? Once you transition to real estate, is there anything that sticks out in your mind that you, I mean, other than it was four times the income, which is a pretty good clue, it was a good choice. But uh, is there anything else that sticks out as, as uh, you made the right decision, one of your first victories? Uh, sure. Yeah, I, I think, you know, getting my first deal done uh, was a major breakthrough. Uh, one of the, something that stuck out in my mind uh, when I was at a, uh, T. Harv Ecker uh, event is um, they took they they take an arrow and they do a demonstration where they put the arrow right on your throat and it's a wooden arrow and it's it's somewhat dull but they have somebody hold the other end and if you, you walk you're supposed to walk into it and it snaps the arrow but if you do it slow you know it starts pressing and pressing and you feel like it's going to jab through your throat there is literally people crying. <laughs> that you know just because they were so afraid but if you walk right into it snaps and so um after getting that in my mind i knew that i had to just do do my first deal and, and make it happen it was really 11 years in the process because i read Riz had poor dad in 2005 and real estate always intrigued me but i thought it was for the people that were already rich and already extremely intelligent um and of course there's rich and extremely intelligent investors, but um, but I thought I had to start out that way. And so, um, you know, I just, once I started taking action, I started talking to brokers, I started, you know, looking for off market deals and one, you know, fell in my lap and I was a part of the CREA, which you all are part of Carolina Real Estate Investment Association. And there was a guy that had a W2 job, made very good income in the 401k. He said, I have this 401k and I'm trying to, it's, it's earning like one or 2%. If you can find a deal, you know, I'll fund it. And, and, uh, if, if you can find it and you pay me a percentage. And so I had a deal and it, it got funded 100%. It was amazing. And that was a major breakthrough that, that it wasn't just reading a story. It was a part of, you know, what was happening in my life. That's great. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you, you see it's real, right? I mean, you People read a lot of things and you understand the theory of it, but until they actually you implement it and you, you see how it actually works and that, then to you, it is real. I mean, as far as the transition, no, that's great. 
Right. Yeah. And then what, can you tell us a little bit about that first deal? So it was a, a deal that it was a small two bedroom, one bath home. And, um, the, it was the broker. Well, the broker that almost brought a he brought a deal to us and we put it under contract. We with, went through due diligence and we, uh, figured out that it was more than what we wanted to uh, take on in terms of rehab. And so we, we had to back out and, uh, and a few weeks after that, he called me up and said, well, I actually have, I'm looking to retire. I'm 73 and I have two rental properties. And, you know, this is one of them. It, uh, it was two bed and one bath for 45,000, which in Hendersonville is, you know, pretty, pretty good. And uh, of course it will need a lot of work on the inside. And, um, and so I went and take, took, you know, I did the numbers, uh, took a look at it and, um, and called uh, my, my friend that was looking at funding the deal and just, you know, put it together and it happened. Um, it was, it was much, much easier than, although it was a long time coming, it was much easier than I, what I made it in my mind mm -hmm. and, uh, and ended up cash flowing uh, for, for a few years, not a huge amount, but it was a start and then sold it and uh, made some money on the, on the back end. Nice, nice uh, chunk of change. And now I wish I would have held on to that property because they're uh, renovating that whole street. <laughs> oh right. <laughs> but, uh, but I sold, I sold the, sold the property. So. <laughs> well, that's good. Like I said, take profits. It's not bad to take profits a long way, and you have a happy, um, happy investor as well. Right. Yep. Right. Right. So, David, in your new world or in your new path, have you come across anything funny that's happened to you? Anything? Any strange stories? Yeah, I, think, I mean, like, like I said, there's always uh, funny things happening. But uh, let me see. Uh, I have I have a partner that I've worked with, um, and uh, and I remember reading a story about uh, ducks. It was ducks, as in Affleck duck. <laughs> but uh, they they talked about how ducks uh, a lot of times they get worked up and they get they get angry and fight with another duck. Um, but then they flap their rings, wings really hard. And it's like, they're releasing that, that energy. And then they, they start swimming. They're calm, calm, like ducks always are. And it was just, you know, a lesson about, you know, if, if you're stressed in, 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 in something in business, you go out and flap your wings, maybe take a bike ride, maybe do some exercise and get that, that energy out. And so it was sort of an in, internal joke every time, you know, something stressful would happen, you know, we'd, we'd uh, talk about flapping our wings. Um, well, one day I was in the car, uh, we, we were going to look at a property and, and uh, there was something a little bit stressful. And so my, my uh, partner got out of the car and started running around the yard flapping. And, uh, <laughs> and right at that time, the, the, the owner of the property drove up and he was running around flapping his his arms. <laughs> so I guess he didn't think about who might see, but uh, you know, it's, it was pretty, pretty funny. Did the owner keep driving or did he actually stop? He, he stopped. And that, the funny thing was, is that uh, immediately when he pulled in, you know, my partner just uh, stopped doing what he doing and, you know, and acted like it never happened. And I think the owner was trying to act like it never happened either. <laughs> well, yeah. Both of you didn't notice the big funny, funny hats that you're wearing as well, because you were so distracted by the, uh, by the duck flapping. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Your <laughs> arms flapping. So. That's right. <laughs> Well, uh, David, where does uh, where are you today in your journey um, as you're developing your real estate business? Uh, it looks like you have the the rehab side, you have the note side of it. Where are you today? Yes, yeah, so uh, I, I'm always you know looking to expand. Uh, it, it's <clears throat> the real estate business really has been really good to me uh, in terms of getting free from my job and creating that passive income to cover more than what my expenses are. And at this point, it's really a, a, a game or like a sport uh, in that I love, I love the business. And, and so I love the business for the business. It's not just uh, something that, you know, I'm trying to do so I can, you know, buy this or buy that or buy or travel the world. Although I, I do want to do those things, but it's like, it's just something that, you know, I could do I don't, even when I'm at retirement age, I think it'd be hard to stop because I love it so much. And so, sure. so I'm always, right now, I'm always looking to create it more into a business, something that will work uh, without me 
And uh, I think the first step was, you know, finding the crew. Once I found the crew, you know, finding a, an agent that could sell the properties for me so I wouldn't have to be take, it, take the calls and show. Uh, more recently, I, I've put acquisition uh, managers in place that, that can do the marketing, get the properties under contract. And, uh, and right now I'm working at, on hiring um, somebody to uh, run, run the office, run the admin side of things. And at that point, uh, I consider that a unit, a, a, a working unit that really runs without me. <clears throat> and then being able to take that unit and duplicate it uh, and, and either expand that unit or duplicate that unit possibly in other markets. Um, and, uh, and also expanding into, um, uh, I think the multifamily area really intrigues me uh, just because uh, it, it's bigger numbers. It's, it's the same concepts. You still have to negotiate. You still have to find the deals. You still have to put things together and you still have to manage things, but it's, it's working with bigger numbers. And so I think a combination of expanding the notes business and um, helping other entrepreneurs is a great way to, uh, to, to expand your business and also expanding into to multifamily. So, so David, what's the future? Look down the road. You know 10 15 years you know again you said you're not going to retire but you know again I, I feel the same way you know i enjoy what i do so you know as, as long as you're enjoying it you know it's not necessarily retiring maybe you scale back some but what, what do things look like down the road for you um i think uh i'm i'm at a point where my one of my uh, mentors uh mitch steven uh he's he's known for notes uh doing notes and and uh on a massive scale <laughs> he does he does a lot of notes and then he's he's uh he wrote a book uh the art of owner financing um and he talks about how you create a moat it's, he considers like a, a city you know the, the cities used to build a wall and create a moat to keep uh the enemies out right and so um he considers that your core business as you create a moat and you create a passive income that exceeds your your monthly expenses, and once you reach that, uh, then you can uh, go out and conquer other lands and still have your your home safe. And what what he means by that is, you know, you create a business that takes care of all your financial needs, and once you are able to do that, then you can go out and and conquer other areas of business. Uh, and I know the way Robert Kiyosaki put it was. Uh, retire so you you can become rich <laughs> and I, I think what he meant by that is once you create that sh steady stream of passive income and you're not tied up in the rat race because it's t being tied up in the rat race is not just working for somebody else it can also be in your own business you're tied up in the rat race and you don't have time to slow down and think about what you want to do with your life and so i'm sort of at that point where i'm i'm uh i'm not slowing down in business but i'm able to to take time to think about real, what I really want to do. And I'm exploring different options. And um, I see several different paths that I can take, but I'm, I'm narrowing it down quite a bit. But um, I want to continue to, to, to expand. Uh, and I would say probably uh, continue to, to, to work the notes business and, and maybe have some, some mentor students uh, or mentee students that I can work with. And uh, as I start, uh, you know, looking for mentors and and, and uh, expanding into other areas, uh, probably within the the multifamily arena. Gotcha. Great. Well, well I, I love what you said about just again thinking and really figuring out and you know being being strategic and and looking down as you as you kind of lay things out forward. You know, Henry Ford said, uh, "Thinking is the hardest job there is." That's why right. so few. That's why so few people do it. Right. Yeah. And it's it's a it's a um, once you build that moat, it's a really good good place to be in. Um, I know I, I'm a big I like to journal, and uh, I've written you know 140 some pages the past month and a half uh, just because my mind is really churning and coming up with ideas and mm -hmm. and uh, you know planning the future. And I just this is it's a amazing business to be be in, and I just love it with everything I am, I, just, I love is, it's like I said, it's, it's a game, it's a sport. It's like my song, it's my music. It's, it's, uh, I just love, love what I do. That's great. Yeah. 
Well, David, what's uh, something you've recently implemented in your business that's uh, helping you achieve your goals? Other than, you know, you mentioned already building your team out, the admin, the all the property manager, as far as the uh, sales and all that. What is something else you've, you've recently been helped you grow? So the way I've been doing business is with notes is that I buy a property. I use private money lenders. And let's say I, I buy a property for, you know, 75,000 and it needs 25 in rehab. I borrow a hundred thousand dollars and, and then I sell it for 170, maybe get 20 down. And so I have a, you know, maybe a 7% payout on a hundred thousand dollars and I wrap do what's called a wrap mortgage and I sell it for more. And I have a $150,000 note that they're paying maybe eight to 9% to me. And it creates a spread. Let's say it's, um, 1200 coming in and, and, and 700 going out. Um, those are just rough numbers. Uh, so something that, uh, my mentor, uh, Mitch Stevens does is that he'll, he'll do a bunch of these and then he'll take, let's say 25 of them. He'll group the notes together, take them to the bank and then get a uh, bank loan at, you know, four and a half percent interest or something like that to pay off all these 8%, 7%, 8% underlying mortgages. And then, and then his cash flow jumps. Uh, And so, um, and so there's, but the thing is about it, it, it's complicated in the way that it's not just a regular refi, because once you transfer that deed, uh, then, then you no longer have that property. And so there's a way to pledge the actual note and mortgage as collateral. And so, I think thinking on a larger basis where um, I'm starting to get to the point where, where, you know, um, I'm able to group those notes together and, and take them to the bank and, and, and do that process. And so it's just a process where, you know, my underlying mortgage goes from maybe 600 to 400, but if you multiply that times, you know, 20, 20 notes uh, it's, it's, you know, you can go from what 12,000 to 8,000. Um, and if you have, if you have 20,000 coming in, and 12,000 went out and that jumps to, you know, instead of that $8,000 spread, it jumps to a, a $12,000 spread. That's a huge, huge deal. So, so that's one of the, the things that um, I read about for a while and, and, and it took me a while to, to start taking those steps, but now I've started taking those steps and, and doing my first, first deals like that. And, and it's a huge, huge uh, breakthrough for me. That's ex- yeah, it sounds exciting. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see that, I mean, that's a, that's a huge, you know, 50% jump almost on from eight to 12. I mean, that's, yeah, that's be definitely impactful. Yeah. That, that'll, yep. that'll make a difference. That'll yep. make a big, big difference. Wow. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so David is, what advice would you give to somebody who's considering making a path change? I think there's a balance between being ultra conservative and being, you know, too conservative and not not being conservative enough. And I, I've been down both. Uh, the first time I remember I was, uh, after, you know, 2008, 2009, it pretty much wiped me out. In 2010, I started a new business and that had $800 in savings and no credit and opened up a storefront business. And, and uh, those were some uh, very difficult years. Uh, so there's definitely a place where you can be uh, too conservative um, but you can also, I'm sorry, where well, you can be too aggressive and, and, and not do your numbers and not, not, uh, you know, figure out what the risk may be. Um, and so you can also, you, if you're too conservative, you can stay, you know, there's people that would love to do real estate or love to open their own business, but stay working a W two job for the rest of their lives, or they may stay way too long which I think I, st- I stayed at my current job a little bit too long, but, but, uh, but I was being <laughs> very, very conservative. Um, so I think knowing the balance and the thing is, is that uh, I used to try to talk to other people and get an exact number uh, about what, you know, how much savings I should have and how, how much, uh, you know, business I should have done before I, I start, my, you know, go out mowing. But the thing is, is that everybody's different. And everybody can handle stress in different ways. Everybody's in a different situation. And so there may be general guidelines that you should follow, but it comes down to, to you have to know yourself. Yeah, I, I mean, for me, uh, journaling, like I said, journaling is one of the main things. 
You know, I, I worked out the numbers. I, I looked at exactly how much I needed to ha have in savings, how much I'd earned over the past income in my part-time real estate business. And, uh, you know, was my, if my part-time real estate business was doing better than my, you know, my, my full-time job, you know, that's when I knew that it was time to leave. And so um, I would say, you know, somebody that's going to take that step, they want to talk to to other people that have done what they want to do and mm -hmm. then do the math, you know, work it out and and uh, and have that balance uh, where uh, you're not being overly aggressive and you're not being overly conservative, but you're taking calculated risks. Yeah. Yeah, well, David, uh, what's the best way for uh, listeners to be able to um, get a hold of you and learn more about what you do or have a conversation with you? Uh, sure. So uh, probably email is the best. Uh, my email is david at callproperties.com. That's spelled K-A-H-L properties.com. So david at K-A-H-L properties.com. Uh, or my phone number is 828-458-5610. Uh, Great. We'll add that in the, uh, the show notes so people can uh, reach out to you. Um, well, David, we'd like to thank you for being a guest on the Road Less Traveled show. Uh, really enjoyed the conversation and we wish you continued success. Thank you. We'd also like to thank our listeners. We really appreciate you tuning in. We please continue to listen and give us a five star rating so we can continue to bring in more great content and uh, you know, fascinating stories to you. Uh, thank you for tuning in. And remember, the fo folks, the road less traveled may be calling you. We recommend that you listen and take action. Thanks for joining David.